Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as I go through the design, construction, and test flights of my Light Ranger foam RC model with flap rods. Let's get to it. I've always been interested in lightweight rate of control model aircraft and so I designed this airplane here. We'll get into the build and design shortly, but the concept is to use 3 16 inch foam board, make it as light as possible. I use saran wrap to cover it and combined with flaps and ailerons, see if we can get a, a slow flyer. So let's go through the um, design and build process. It is still possible to draw model airplane plans by hand, and for a simple model like this, I just did a sketch of the top view and side view so I get some idea what the model looked like before I start cutting the foam board. <clears throat> to set up the flap rods, uh, consult the instruction manual for your transmitter. You'll have to do something to activate the flap system. There's usually diagrams, flap rods, uh, whatever you want to do. And then once that is uh, done, go ahead and set up all your RC equipment to make sure everything moves in the right direction before you install it into the model. It will save a lot of heartache further on down. Once that's done, I even sketched out a little diagram just showing where the servers are orientated, upside down, where the arms go, and everything worked out fine. This is the top view of the um, wing. Just some rough measurements, and I <clears throat> sketched that out with a straight edge over the foam board. Usually easier to write on top of the paper, the foam board, cut it out, then I remove the paper. The paper is about half the weight of the foam board uh, with the wing. Another view of the top view, and then we'll continue on down as we construct the wing. Make sure there's enough foam area to mount your servos for the flap runs. Continuing the fuselage. Cut off the fuselage sides, two simple formers with openings so the electronics wires can go through them. Fill in the fuselage, the formers are in place. Make sure you use some sort of alignment gauge when you uh, connect the tail so the fuselage is as straight as possible. I kept the fuselage bottom open just to save weight. There's a top hatch that I glued in over the nose section that makes the front a little bit stronger. Notice also the ply plate for the two hole mount for the Park 180 electric motor. Very simple tail services, just the elevator. Make sure you bevel the control edges on the elevator and there's a cutout on the rudder so the elevator can go up. The stabilizer is simply glued on the top of the fuselage. You can see the Park 180 motor um, screwed in place. I had problems with the motor for whatever reason. I eventually used a Park 250 motor in the description. The ailerons are cut out. You can see where the servos are gonna go. The carbon rod put in its initial placement on top of the wing. I used some hot glue to glue the carbon rod to the wing. Uh, the glue does that weight. Again, this is a prototype to see how things work. The servos are in place. There's a yellow heat shrink tubing to connect the two rods for both wings, and it provided a completely strong and rigid wing. I was very happy. I'd like to show you now how to set up the flap rod system. The flap rods are through the magic of the computer radios. It may vary with your tr uh, transmitter. Uh, please check your uh, instruction manual for how to do it, but I'll give you the way it works in the DX6, so at least you have a starting point for your radio. Note also that you'll need at least a six channel receiver because the two aileron servos, with in my case, I have the AR620 receiver, the right servo is in port number two, and the um, right, the left is in port number, the right is in port number two, the left servo is in port number six. And um, you'll just have to see how it is for your receiver and transmitter. But it's a two-step process on the um, transmitter. And we'll use, um, in this case, switch number A to raise and lower the flap runs on here. But what will happen is for the um, setup, it's a two-step process. The first thing we do is we go to the system setup. These are the things that you do. Uh, once for your model because it, there's nothing that needs to be adjusted. So we turn off the RF and what we do is we go down to aircraft type for the DX6 and notice on the aircraft type this is how you set up your servos for the flaps, uh, V-tail, um, 
ailerons, ele whatever. Notice that there's a picture of a left and a right servo to the ailerons, and the wing is flapper on, and the tail is normal. Okay, so you'll just have to, for the um, DX6, we uh, press down on the roller, you can see one aileron, one flap, uh, two ailerons, one flap. There's just a bunch of configurations to tell the radio what to do. So once the flapper on is set, we go back to the main menu. And now, because you have set up the flaperons, there is a section for the flap system. All right, so there's a the flap system. This shows where the controls are going. The important thing are the switch. Notice we're having switch A. That was a switch on the top, switch A for the flaps up or down. And the elevator, you may want to give some elevator for trim. We're not going to do it with this model, but the flap position zero is zero on the switch. Position one is 100% flaps. One trick, notice I had to put um, negative 100%. The reason for that is when I had plus 100%, the flaps went the wrong direction. So by um, doing it to negative 100%, the flaps went in the correct direction. So that's essentially what you do to set up for the flap rods. The one thing I do want to point out with the flap rods, as I mentioned in the video, it's super important that you set everything up to make sure the servos are going the right way so that when you put them on the airplane, there's no guesswork. There's a, some, you just have to play with the reversing the flaps 100%, negative 100% to get it right. I just put notes here in a little card. I'll, I'll put this up here to look further. I did that homework and when I put it in, everything worked just fine. This is a com this is a completed light ranger. It it is not light. It weighs about four and a half ounces. But <clears throat> I used what servos I had, the motor I had, and I used carbon fiber rods for the wings that I had just to see if it goes together to see how it flies. Um, if it does fly, I've got plenty of things we can do to make it lighter. For example, these carbon fiber rods are three millimeter rods. I have. Never worked with these before, but they're way too heavy and strong for something like this. I've ordered some uh, lighter weight rods. Also, uh, the servos, I can use HS40 uh, servos for the ailerons. There's several things that I can do to make a lighter version second time around. But this is the model for now. The um, wings were originally, when you have just the foam board, it's an extremely lightweight wing, but it's just absolutely fragile. It just won't fly at all. This is covered with the uh, with saran uh, shrink wrap. So what you do is you add the carbon fiber tubes here. I got them on Amazon. The details are in the description. Hot glue them in various places, and that makes for a very strong, rigid wing. Also, you'll notice the ailerons are fairly big because they are flap rods, combination flaps and ailerons. I think on a subsequent model, if this flies okay, I can make those a little bit bigger and we'll have a little bit more effect from that. We'll see how the test flights go with this model. There's three channels of control with the ailerons, throttle, and then the elevator. There's no rudder needed for this and just a basic fuselage with a guide for the push rod, things of that nature. Really nothing else to go. But what I would like to do is just to demonstrate the flap rods so you can see what they look like. So this is elevator up, down. Now notice the ailerons. Those are just normal ailerons, left bank and right bank. Uh, bank. When we flip the switch, they go down to flaps, but they still function as ailerons. And they go up. So we'll experiment to see how that works. Plenty of power with the motor, and this is just um, saran wrap using a glue stick to stick on the saran wrap to the wing. We'll see how that holds up for the model. Scotch tape for the hinges. So this is just a prototype. We'll see how things go. One other thing I wanted to point out is that I added a little bit of um, 360 inch foam board here to give the wing a slight positive incidence. Notice this is a flat wing. So the flat wings work well with lightweight slow flyers. We'll see how it works with something like this. The coming in at four and a half ounces is a little bit heavier than I had anticipated. So um, the one looks good, and I think we're going to give it, try to give it a test flight tomorrow with the field. Elevator. Okay. Now watch the ailerons. Your normal okay. ailerons, right? Okay. So when I flip this switch, those are the flaps, but they still behave like ailerons. And I can raise them. 
Huh. The Light Ranger flew great. This is his maiden flight. This is the first launch. Leo did a great job. Uh, pulled back of the power, and I just knew instantly the bottle was handling well. Uh, throttled back, uh, nice easy turns. It just flew well. And as I mentioned earlier, there is a slight positive incidence to the wing. I put a 3 16th inch piece of foam under the leading edge of the wing, a little bit of positive incidence. I do think that helps. So I'm looking forward to make a lighter version of this, Light Ranger 2, and see how that flies. Well, I just got done flying the uh, this plane with the Saran Wrap, and I got to say, it absolutely flew well. I couldn't be any happier. With the flaps, I didn't see too much of a difference. A um, little bit less aileron response, but with flaps up, it flew fine. It flew down well. It slowed down well. <clears throat> so we've proven with the Saran Wrap works good. The flat wing, no airfoil, works fine. A little bit of a positive incidence. So the plan is to settle down, get some lighter components, smaller servos, lighter carbon rod, maybe a little bigger wingspan and build another one. But it absolutely flew well. I, I, I'm extremely pleased. Oh, and uh, the other thing is, if you look head on, there's no dihedral. It is literally a flat wing. So very happy. Literally just back from the flying field with the test flights of the Light Ranger. <clears throat> I'm going to call this a Light Ranger 1 because I'm going to make a, a version 2. This is one of the best flying models I had. It just literally flew like it was, the old expression, it's on rails. It just was solid, stable, no concerns at all flying it. So clearly the carbon um, rods are necessary for wing strength. I've got, these are three millimeter rods. I've got two and one millimeter on because there's going to be a second version. I'll have the lighter rods. I think I can afford to make the wing bigger. I can make the aileron, flap rods a little bit bigger. I will do so. But the moments all seem about right. There's no need for rudder right now. The elevator was about right. Everything worked out fine. I just have to make it a little bit lighter. I'll do that with smaller servos, possibly a smaller engine. But other than that, it just it, it flew fine. So uh, the saran wrap held on. The glue stick held on to the covering. So a success on this, um, as I mentioned, the hand-drawn plans are all that exist for this model. They're available for download in the description. When I do the second version, I am going to apply lightning holes to the um, vertical and horizontal tail assemblies along with the fuselage. Anywhere I can lighten it up, I will. And I'll have, I'm gonna to try to use QCAD to drop a set of plans on that, but that'll be for the Light Ranger 2 uh, version. But very happy with the way this thing flew. I experimented with the flap rons. I didn't see a whole lot of difference with the flap rons. I think because the um, flap rons are a little bit smaller than I should have them. And this at four and a half ounces is, a little, is, is much heavier than I had desired. So that'll all be part of the um, follow on build for this model. So thanks for watching.